right, hello, welcome. This is Grant from grantthomas.com. This is the BMW 225XC. Let's try and get this thing started. So there's the start button as you would with any other electric car. To first of all, I need to do two things. One is to put the thing into Eco Pro mode, which you do with a little paddly switch down here. And the second one is to put it into E-Drive. There are two modes. There's an auto E-Drive, which basically allows the car to make the decision whether the electric car um, motor or whether the petrol engine should actually make a better decision or you can have the maxi drive which is you overriding it and saying I want to be an electric car today leave the fuel um, alone one really nice feature on this car panoramic electric sunroof um, one thousand pound optional extra on all three versions of this let's go for a drive now if you want things like color reversing cameras that's extra sir there's quite a few differences. I'm now used to driving the BMW i3. Um, so I'm gonna apologize straight away for just how I'm gonna make the comparisons between the two because this doesn't have much in the way of regen. So this has two engines. This has a 1.5 liter turbocharged petrol engine at the front and that drives the front wheels. At the back, it has an uh, 88 horsepower engine um, or I should say motor, because it's the electric motor at the back, which is connected to a, a battery pack, which is only a miserly 7.6 kilowatts. Anyway, 88 horsepower on the back wheels, 136 on the front, 224 brake horsepower. That is why this is the 225. The X is because it's an X drive, it's a four wheel drive. So this car in the snow or the rain or in any kind of skiddy conditions will manage the traction control and it will use the drive trains independently to get you the best grip. So if you're looking for a kind of four x four, which isn't a four x four, then that could meet your needs. And finally, on the end of that is the E for E drive. So because it's electric, you've got an electric drive on the end of it. Let's see how quickly it goes off the mark. And it creeps forward again. As soon as you take your foot off, it creeps forward. There's no hill start or stop like you get on the i3 or the Outlander. Go. All right, that's rather quick. And if you wanna have the roar of an engine, then maybe you might like how that sounded. To me, it just jitters me. I'm, when, you, when you're burning petrol, I don't want to have an electric car and burn petrol and I'm misting up again so I'm going to put the heaters back on to auto. Okay so having a quick look around inside the car this is the BMW 225XE this is the luxury model and this is the Oyster with grey trim not sure if you can just see it there are grey stitching I should say on the panels um, it's a really good quality inside as you expect from BMW uh, some very familiar controls the iDrive uh, system um, which you'll be familiar with this one hasn't got the professional sat nav so it's just got the smaller screen um, rather than the full width screen which I believe you'll get with a professional sat nav you can just see in the corner there my trusty Rolex 32 amp uh, charging station which is currently charging this at 16 amps this only charges at 3.7 kilowatts which for those of you with an i3 will realize the i3 has two times 3.7 kilowatt charges. This just has the one. So it charges at 3.7. Takes about two and a half hours to charge it from flat. And this one was flat. Um, and as you can see, it's just estimating it's going to be fully charged by 12.42. It's currently got 14 miles in the battery. And it's going to be 27 miles range when full. You won't get that in this car. Budget on around 20. It's currently two degrees outside budget on 15. Uh, rest of these controls um, very well grouped and logical this one has got the heated seats so you've got three levels of heated seats you've got the um, two zone climate control which is on a little too chilly at the moment let's just turn that up to sort of 20 touch we are plugged in so clearly we're not going to go anywhere but having to drive this having to pull down this lever into D and then going down uh, back up to R it's just odd having a gear stick again after having uh, you know, on the i3, you've got this control up here that changes it. And on the leaf, you have a little switch down there you just put into drive. Anyway, so you have got a gear stick. There is also the electronic parking brake, the iDrive system, heating controls there. Um, everything you'd expect on the navigation. So the radio. By the way, I'm getting many, many more radio stations on the DAB inside this version than I'm getting inside my i3. Not sure if that's a problem with my i3 or whether this has just got a better um, radio. And now you can see you've got this. 40, 40, 20. Let me take the middle armrest down or the 
and that's got some nice touches as well so you've got this kind of twin cup holder where you can have twin cup holders there and then there's another storage compartment just in the back there so yeah nice touch there in the center armrest or you can actually pull the tabs on the side here and actually bring this down so it's a ski hatch so you can get your skis in iso fixes as well for those of you that need to fix a child car seat this one has got on the actual rather funky remote control if i press the boot button you should see and you've got a reasonable amount of boot space in the back here with the 40 20 40 split so you've got well i've just got the charging cable cover there me being messy then you've got the granny charger you can take both of those out and they will fit beneath the floor of the boot so you can actually store both of those in there and have a very usable flat uh, boot space with a flat entry as well so really usable and when that's down you can get actually sort of 1300 uh, litres of storage space but you've just got a couple of kind of nets here at the moment there is also a charging facility on there so you can put in a usb charger and charge your iphones whilst they're in the back good door pockets electric door controls and speakers and everything um, you do get as well this ambi lighting control which is really nice in this car i'll try and show it at night a bit better Okay, a couple of things I wanted to show you. First of all is the cruise control. You press the button on the steering wheel and you'll see on the outside of the speedometer, just where it says 30 miles an hour, uh, there is a speed um, little green light. And what I'm gonna do is just press that into action. You'll see briefly in the middle of the display, it says 30 miles an hour. And then your only indication as to how fast you've got the cruise control set is that little green dot on the left-hand side of the speedometer. Okay, one other thing I'm going to show you, it's currently one degree, it is snowing here. Um, you'll also see on the right hand side that I've got this in the most efficient mode of driving, that is Max E-Drive and Eco Pro, both of those buttons pressed. And if I take it out of cruise control, you will see that only the tiniest amount of regen, that little charge thing on the bottom, about six o'clock on the clock, you'll see there's a little white arrow that goes forward when I'm depressing the pedal, and when I take it off, it's just a tiny amount. You wouldn't even know it's slowing the car down. It's that supple. I think we've been spoilt on cars like the Outlander, on the Leaf when the B Eco mode, the Outlander when it's in B5, uh, and certainly the i3 by default all have you know, considerable regen or variable amounts of regen. This doesn't. So here we are, absolutely frozen. Uh, arrived currently down in Portsmouth. I'm just about to go and pick up my son. Uh, what you can see here is that on the odometer well it was 10.6 plus the half a mile that i forgot to press the odometer so let's call that 11 miles the guessometer is saying i have six miles left it is a heady three degrees if i just press the next button it's telling me i've got 38 percent of the battery left now let's just <laughs> i've just done that trip without going on the motorway without using any heat at all inside the cabin the back windows misted up the sunroof on top is misted up and i'm frozen um there doesn't seem to be anywhere on this display anywhere on the computer that's telling me whether i'm using battery or whether i'm using you know telling me the kind of information with regards to how much percent electric drive now i have driven it in electric drive so i've pressed this button here and i've just had it on maxi drive you can see that over here by the way so i've just learned a little bit more about this. So I'm in Maxi Drive, that 80s reggae artist, Eco Pro mode. I have got, as it says, six miles left, or 38% of the battery. I have gone no faster than 45 miles an hour on this journey in those 10 miles. And the last mile and a half, I haven't gone faster than 15 miles now because I've just crawled through the traffic in rush hour. So there is no way on this earth that this car can do 25 miles an hour. I don't think it can do 20 see I'm, the brain's brain's frozen there's no way this car can do 25 miles on electric only range there's no way it can do 20 miles on electric only range and i think maybe in the height of summer with the battery at 20 degrees and you've just finished charging it maybe maybe then you'll get 20 but in winter with no heating with two layers of fleece on um forget it you're going to get probably nine or ten miles electric range
All right, good morning. It is Monday the 13th of February and our final morning in this, the BMW 225XE. We've had this as a demonstrator over the weekend and had it for four nights, no, four days, three nights, and used it in a whole variety of our normal family circumstances. So we've, uh, Joe's taken it on the commute to, to work, about a 34 mile commute. We've had the family in it, we've taken those out, we've taken the kids out, we've done some shopping in it, we've transported some loads in the back with the seats down. And, you know, let me do my kind of summary and thoughts. This is a really good format, five seater family car. Um, this particular model is 34,000 uh, pounds with all the specs that are inside of it. If you take off the government grant, that comes to 30,000. Um, the proposition on this though if you wanted to look to, to have this car there are some really good lease deals on it so if you want to drive it for a couple of years or if you're a company car driver and in fact the very reason we're driving it now is because of the deals that are available on this on the lease the only model only model that was cheaper than this was actually bigger which was the 330e and it's a much much lower driving positions not keen on that driving position plus if you've got you know elderly relatives that need to get in the car they're gonna to have to dislocate the knees to get into it so this is a far more usable space it's more like your golf plus your say altea our other car is the bmw i3 which is a four-seater smaller car this is going to work best for company car drivers and those who are going into an electric or plug-in hybrid for car for the first time i think this car is all about the miles per gallon rather than the electric range so yesterday joe jumped in this car and did her normal commute to work so let's call it 34 miles all in she just put it on eco pro let it do all the, all the working out of which engine to use because it works out whether you use electric or whether it uses petrol and uh, she got about 69 mpg on this however <clears throat> last night that meant when we went out in this there was absolutely no battery left we couldn't there wasn't time to plug it in i drove it admittedly on b roads sort of between 30 and 50 miles and got 51 mpg so with no battery uh, and with no motorway driving i managed to get this at 51 mpg i think this is a stopgap solution i wouldn't recommend buying one of these at the moment unless you're quite comfortable with that kind of 50 60 mile uh, mpg and you're not worried about the electric these kinds of cars are going to be segmented. The electric range or plug-in cars are going to be segmented into a number of bands. Cheapest will be the zero emissions. Then you're going to have three different bands based upon the electric range capability of that car. And this one, with its book mileage of 25, will be in the lowest tier. I don't like these kind of short range electric cars. So if you're buying this car expecting to have 25 miles worth of range, you drive it home from the dealer and find you've got 14, you know, that's not much and you're for most people that's going to be less than their daily commute and you're going to be exhausting that very very quickly i think usable electric range in these kinds of cars should be 50 miles you know i've consistently said that the two best models or usages of petrol and electric in, in cars at the moment is the Vauxhall ampera which stopped being made three years ago and the bmw i3 and the bmw i3 uses the electric motor to drive the car all of the time but that's the right model because in these kinds of cars if you put your foot down the engine flares in you and it jumps between the two all the time now the i3 doesn't do that it never uses the engine to drive the car it only uses it to charge the battery so you always can get the most electric range before having to engage the generator so there we are um 225xe great car don't be surprised if you see us driving around in one of these from august this year which is when i think 31st of july our car current lease car is up um We'll more than likely have this uh, but i will be back if we do get the gt we'll do a review on that and at this point in time i will properly do my review on the i3 the one that i have bought to give you my perspectives on it on what, what quite frankly is the best electric car on the road uh, today um bar a tesla all right if you have been thank you very much for enjoying watching this and uh feel free to get in touch on twitter at grant a thomas uh, on the website, it's grantthomas.com, and you can email me at grant at grantthomas.com. Thanks, and bye for now.